Boxing fans, what's good? Your man Roberto Flack here, and I'm here to eat my words. <laughs> uh, obviously, I'm here to talk about uh, this past weekend's fights between, mainly between, um, we'll talk about the McCloskey and Khan fight briefly, Berto Ortiz and uh, Salido and uh, Juanma. <laughs> Very, very interesting week in the boxing, and we've seen two O's go. Um, let's first talk about the McCloskey and Khan fight. Um, this was a fight, obviously, a lot of, you know, I didn't do a prediction on it because I figured it was going to go, you know, Khan's way. Now, to me, okay, and, and again, I, I think Amir Khan is a great fighter. I think... He's got the skills. He's got all the tools needed to be uh, one of the best fighters like of this generation. He didn't look that fantastic to me against McCloskey. McCloskey was he throwing a lot of punches? Was he you know was he was he pressuring Khan? Not really. Wasn't really doing much to make uh, Khan weary of of whatever McCloskey was gonna do. Coming into the fight, he was you know undefeated European champion, but Amir Khan already has faced a much better competition than McCloskey. So uh, there's times where Amir Khan can look fantastic, and then there's times where he just looks really sloppy. And I think we've seen some of the sloppiness in this past fight. And he hurt this dude McCloskey in the sixth round. And, you know, from there, obviously, you know, we've seen what happened. And then, you know, it's it's tough to observe, really, uh, how good... Well, I don't want to say how good, but, you know, he he didn't turn out with... A, you know, he didn't, he didn't come with a big performance. Is that going to prevent the Bradley fight from happening? No. You know, I think that fight's obviously, you know, still going to go on. Uh, the two premier 140-pounders going at it. I mean, I think it's a great matchup. And they're looking to do it in July, I believe. So look out for that. Um, again, wasn't overly impressed with Khan, but obviously he was the better, more dominant fighter and landed more punches. So let's uh, scoot on ahead to Victor Ortiz and Andre Berto. I want to first off say, yo, big props to Victor Ortiz, man. He shocked the hell out of me. Shocked the hell out of a lot of people, thinking that he was just going to come in there and Berto was going to have his way with him. One thing uh, I noticed with Ortiz, man, is he could take a punch at 147. That was one of my um, uh, one of my things that I gave an advantage to for Berto going into the fight. And I had Berto, you know, I, I picked Berto to win this. But as the fight progressed, I mean, you seen who really had the power in this fight. And it wasn't Andre Berto. Now, granted, Andre Berto landed, was landing some crazy shots. And at times, you know, he would get his combinations off. But more so, it was really uh, one-two shots or, or lead right hands that he was landing. And he, had, and he managed to drop Ortiz and he managed to hurt him. I think by that time, though, Ortiz had done enough damage, and, and you can see it in Berto's legs. I mean, his legs were shot by, like, the 7th, 8th round, and was it an expose of Andre Berto, or do we know Berto fought like this? I mean, we mentioned the last tough fight that he had was against Luis Collazo. Now, I don't think... Him, uh, I don't think Ortiz being a southpaw had more to do with it than Ortiz being faster in this fight and landing harder shots. And, and, and you know, there were times, again, where Berto did land his punches. Because the thing with Ortiz is, Ortiz isn't, like, a great defensive fighter either. I mean, he's the type of dude that he, he, can, get, um, he can get pulled into exchanges... Now, and, and at 140, we've seen that that sometimes isn't the best thing, but we've seen fighters in the past that have moved up in weight 
and their power and their speed translate um, really well, and sometimes even for the better. And we've, you know, I think this is the case with Ortiz, man. I think he's a legit 147 pounder. I mean, even at 140, he was coming in really, really heavy anyway. So, um, yo, again, man, props to him, man. He he proved me wrong. He proved a lot of doubters wrong, and. Uh, the welterweight division just got really interesting, and you know they're they're already mentioning fights with him and Pacquiao and Mayweather, which I I don't think are gonna happen just yet. You don't want to throw him into the wolves yet, but think of matchups with Miguel Cotto, Shane Mosley, um, who's that, who else is out there? Antonio Margarito, uh, you know. And you got up and coming guys like Kel Brook, and Maidana. I heard is moving up to 147, and then eventually Amir Khan. You know he's gonna move up to 147 too. So the welterweight division just started to spice up a little bit, and and I think in the next year it's gonna be a loaded division again. You know, bar it, you know, Cotto maybe not coming down or Margarito not coming down, but for the right money and then the right opportunity, I think they both would do it. So. We'll see, man. Uh, big, big win for Victor Ortiz. So then we go off to Showtime, where it was Juanma versus Salido. Holy shit. <laughs> you know, I, I, the, thing with, the thing with Juanma to me, and, 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 I, and I've said this many times, is I think... He was hyping himself more than really he should have been at this stage of his career. When guys are talking about how he is better than Cotto and how he'll surpass Cotto and he'll be better than Trinidad, and you gotta ease up. <laughs> I mean, we've seen guys like Trinidad and Cotto under adversity against tougher opposition and come out the victor. And we didn't see that with Juanma. And Salido just, you know, beat the brakes out of him, man. I mean, just beat him to the punch every time. Was landing almost at will. And Wanma, no head movement at all, man. And <clears throat> it, it, it's like every, if you look at every commentator that talks about Wanma, one of the things about him that gets heavily criticized is how he negates his game plans and he likes to slug it out. Well, Salido did exactly that, went to him, made Juan my fight, and that was a bad move. <laughs> you, you, you can't fight a guy like that. And truth be told, Juan Ma is, a, you know, to me is still a better boxer than Salido, but he didn't implement any of those tools. All it was, was, it became a slugfest, man. And who, who's going to knock the first dude out? And Salido... Put it on his ass, and and Wama had no answer. I mean, he had another situation, no legs, man. He was just getting hit repeatedly with, like he, you know, Salido was doing. He was doing these like hooking rights, but then like he would sneak like a left hook in there, you know. And Wama wasn't ready for it. Now, you know, there's been talk about Wama having personal issues you know, outside of the ring happening, and, you know, that can affect a fighter's uh, mental state, but this does a lot of damage to his current situation, because that fight with Gamboa was, and, and, and again, this is one of the shitty things about boxing that happens sometimes, where now, that fight just lost its intrigue, you know, I, I can uh, name a fight that many of us wanted to see a long time ago, Miguel Cotto and Floyd Mayweather, never happened. You know, just... Shit happens. <laughs> and this, this is another scenario, man. I think Juan, Wama talked about, you know, he wants a rematch and he's going to move up to one to, to 130. But what Gamboa is going to end up doing now, man, is he's the, he's the dude at featherweight now. I think he should fight Chris John, take care of that, and he's going to be the dude that's... You know, running that division. And he'll move up. You know, I, I don't think he's going to move up that much, but... Gamboa's in the driver's seat now, man. And Wama needs to go back on the drawing board and... 
get his shit together, man. I mean, that was not a good performance from Wadma. I mean, Styles make fights, man, and this this is what. And I I bring back to my point where, you know, when you start talking about, you know, you're putting fighters over other fighters who have proven that they can battle adversity against top opposition and come out the victor, you can't go around saying that you're like the best Puerto Rican fighter that's going to live or the best of this, you know, and that and the next era. You got a reality check. You know what I'm saying? And I'm a fan of Juan Ma. But I'm almost glad that this happened. So even even though you know people complain about it being an early stoppage, and I think maybe there might have been an early stoppage, but realistically, think of the next what minute that that was left in that round it wasn't looking good for Juan Mayo. It, 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 that may have saved him a few fights, <laughs> uh, you know, because Salida wasn't he wasn't stopping. So, we'll see what happens from uh, here on out, and like I always say, man, hit up the links, hit up the podcast, hit up the music, anything, and for all the haters out there, too, that are leaving these bullshit comments, yo, it's not that serious, okay? <laughs> I'll be back at you, man. Peace.